Welcome to a journey into the unknown, a quest to uncover the truth about one of the most mysterious and elusive creatures to ever roam the earth, the Sasquatch. For centuries, mankind has been haunted by tales of the giant ape-like being that stalks the wilderness, a creature that defies explanation and strikes fear in the heart of all who encounter it. Some call it a monster, others worship it like a god, but all who have faced it have forever been changed by the experience. And yet, some people still can't accept the evidence. Throughout time, people from all over the world have reported encounters with this mysterious creature. From the wilds of North America to the dense forests of Asia, the Sasquatch has been part of folklore for centuries. But it's not just a legend for many, it's reality. There have been numerous reported sightings and encounters with the Sasquatch. From hikers and campers to hunters, and even military personnel. One of the most famous and well-documented of these is the Ape Canyon incident of 1924, where a crew of miners were terrorized by a group of Sasquatch who hurled rocks at their cabin in an attempt to break in. The miners fought back with guns and dynamite, but the creatures retreated into the mountains, leaving the men shaken and traumatized. We will also examine reports from experts, witnesses, and a survivor of a Sasquatch attack who shared their terrifying experience and the impact that it has had on their lives. Is it a wild animal, driven to aggression, or a supernatural being with malevolent intent? The scientific community remains skeptical, but for those that have faced the creature and lived to tell the tale, there is no doubt that Sasquatch is real, and it's a force to be reckoned with. So join me, Max Huntley, in this episode of Strange News, where we explore the evidence and separate fact from fiction, and come face to face with a creature that has haunted humanity for centuries. We have to continually look at the difference between evidence and proof when examining any of these findings when it comes to Sasquatch. Evidence is tangible, physical pieces of information that point towards a conclusion or theory. It is the clues and facts that can be examined and analyzed. Proof, on the other hand, is the conclusive validation of that theory. It is irrefutable, incontrovertible validation that leaves no room for doubt. Evidence is the building blocks that lead to proof, but it's not the same as proof itself. In the search for Sasquatch, evidence may be found in the form of footprints, hair samples, and photographs and video. But true proof of the creature's existence remains well, somewhat mysterious. The quest for proof is a dramatic one, full of twists and turns, doubts and discoveries, but ultimately, it is the pursuit of the truth. Researchers and enthusiasts alike have been collecting and studying footprints that they believe to have been left by a Sasquatch. These footprints have been found in various locations around the world, from the Pacific Northwest to the Himalayan mountains. They're often large, measuring up to 24 inches in length, and feature distinct characteristics such as dermal ridges and toes that are longer and more curved than those of humans. But the question remains, are these footprints truly those of a Sasquatch, or are they just the work of hoaxers? First, let's look at what we know from the most famous evidence of all the Patterson-Gimlin sighting from 1967, where Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin captured footage of a Sasquatch walking in a California forest. This footage has been analyzed by experts countless times, 
and each time has been proven to be authentic and not tampered with. However, we don't hear much about the footprints collected that day, which might arguably be some of the most important evidence that we've discovered. The Patterson-Gimlin sighting of 1967 is one of the most famous and well-documented encounters with Bigfoot. The incident occurred in Bluff Creek, California, when Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin filmed a female Sasquatch walking along a creek bed. The footage, which has become known as the Patterson-Gimlin film, is considered by many to be the best evidence of the existence of Sasquatch. One of the most intriguing pieces of evidence from the Patterson-Gimlin sighting are the footprints that were found at the site. Several experts in the field of Sasquatch research have analyzed the footprints and have come to the same interesting conclusions. One of the first experts to ever analyze the footprints was Dr. Grover Kantz, a physical anthropologist at Washington State University. Dr. Kantz examined the cast of a footprint found at the site and concluded that it belonged to a bipedal primate, possibly a Sasquatch. He also pointed out the unique characteristics of the footprint, such as the long, narrow heel and well-defined arch, which are not found in any known human or animal footprint. Another expert who analyzed the footprints was Dr. Jeff Meldrum, a professor of anatomy and anthropology at Idaho State University. Dr. Meldrum conducted a detailed study of the footprints and concluded that they were consistent with the anatomy and mechanics of a bipedal primate. He also pointed out that the footprints were larger and had more human-like toes than any known ape. These findings were a revelation to the Sasquatch community. And in addition to these experts, Dr. Matthew Johnson, a wildlife biologist, also conducted an analysis of the footprints found at the site that day. He used computer-aided design software to create a 3D model of the footprint and then compared them to the foot anatomy of various primates and human populations. He concluded the very same thing. These footprints were consistent with a primate that walks on two legs and had characteristics that are not seen in any known animal or human foot. Several other experts have concluded their own analysis of footprints and have come to the same conclusions. The unique characteristics of the footprint, such as the long narrow heel and well-defined arch and human-like toes are not found in any known human or animal. The footprints found at the site of the Patterson-Gimlin sighting are considered by many to be some of the best evidence of the existence of Sasquatch. There's also more recent footprint evidence, like the Skookum cast, a plaster cast of a large human-like footprint that was found in Washington State in the year 2000. Researchers have examined that cast and determined that it is not consistent with any known animal or human. We also wanted to look at some of the experts in the field of forensic analysis who shared their insights on the authenticity of the footprints and examine how they can be used to help determine the existence of Sasquatch. In 2012, a team of researchers led by Dr. Melba Ketchum announced the results of a five-year DNA study that they claimed proved the scientific existence of Bigfoot. The team's findings were published in a peer-reviewed journal. According to the study, the team analyzed DNA samples from purported Sasquatch hair, blood, and other tissue samples that were collected from various locations in North America. The samples were analyzed using next-generation sequencing techniques and were compared to the DNA of almost all known animals. The team reported that the DNA of the Sasquatch samples was found to be a novel hominid, a human-ape hybrid, and not related 
to any known animal species. The study also stated that the Sasquatch samples were found to have human nuclear DNA and a mosaic genome of human and primate origin. The team also stated that the data suggested that the Sasquatch population is small, isolated, and possibly inbred, with no more than a few thousand remaining individuals. Perhaps this is why Sasquatch sightings are so rare. The study's conclusions were met with both skepticism and excitement in the scientific community. Many scientists were skeptical of the study's findings, citing the lack of proper controls, lack of replication, and the fact that the journal in which the study was published was not a well-known or respected journal in the field of genetics. Some scientists also pointed out that the study's sample size was too small and that the samples used in the study could have been contaminated. Despite the skepticism, the study generated significant media attention and sparked renewed interest in the search for Sasquatch. Dr. Ketchum and her team continued to defend the study and its findings, stating that the DNA analysis was conducted in a professional manner and that the results were peer-reviewed and independently verified. The 2012 study remains a controversial subject in the Sasquatch research community and the scientific community as a whole. While some believe that the study provides strong evidence for the existence of Sasquatch, others argue that the study's findings are not conclusive and that more research is needed to fully understand the DNA of a Sasquatch. However, one thing is for sure. The 2012 study led by Dr. Melba Ketchum has reignited the debate about the existence of Sasquatch and has sparked new interest in the search for this elusive creature. It has also highlighted the need for further research and more rigorous scientific studies to be conducted on the DNA of a Sasquatch. We recently got an email from a viewer, has been 86. I wanted to share my experience with you, and I hope you can use it so people know they aren't alone, because I know firsthand how seeing things like this can make you feel, especially when you know that you can't tell anyone about it. So this is what happened. My mom turned 70, so I thought it would be nice to surprise her by flying out to Ohio for a visit. My mom has always wanted to live in the deep woods and own a lot of property, and her dream came true. She lives in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by the deep woods with no neighbors. While I was staying there with her, I would occasionally sneak out at night after she went to bed to smoke a cigarette. If she knew I smoked, she'd kill me. Anyways, one night I went into the woods to burn one and get some fresh air. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, I got a whiff of the most rancid smell I've ever smelt in my entire life. It smelled like an actual cross between rotting garbage, burnt hair, and a wet dog. My eyes teared up. It was that bad. I thought that maybe my mom might be throwing out her scraps or something in the woods. So I used a flashlight on my phone to go check. I started to realize that while looking for the trash, the smell kept getting worse and worse. I had to tuck my nose into my t-shirt and even that was barely helping. I was about to give up when I heard a huge thud on the ground next to me. I flashed my light on it and expected to find an animal, but it turned out it was a huge rock. I was confused and I started to look around and wondering where this thing could have came from. Then another boulder came screaming past my head before I could even finish my thought. I was seriously freaked out, but for some reason, I charged in the direction that the rock came and started yelling profanities, trying to sound like a badass, I guess. Before I could turn and get away from that noxious odor, I found myself staring directly at the most terrifying face I had ever seen. This thing looked like it was from Planet of the Apes or something. 
I saw its beady eyes, its furry head, hairy body, and a face like a caveman. It let out a huge growl that was so deep and bellowing, unlike anything I've ever heard before. I sprinted towards the house as fast as I could. The sounds that came out of this thing were terrifying, like something out of a horror film. I'll never forget the sound of its growl. As I ran, I could hear it coming after me from behind. The sounds of its grunts as it ran still haunt me to this day. I busted through the front door and slammed it behind me, and then locked it. The second that I turned the lock, the beast banged against the door. I think I just barely made it inside. It continued to pound on the door for what seemed like forever, and I had no idea what to do. I stepped back from the door in fear. My mom came running out of her bedroom screaming, and I couldn't speak to her. I was in fear for my life. She helped me push the table and chairs in front of the door, and we ran to the other side of the house. After a while, the sounds finally stopped. I felt a rush of relief flood my body. My mom asked me again, what the hell is that? I didn't know what to tell her, so I just said, you have to be careful with bears around here, mom. As soon as I finished my sentence, a huge slam came from the other side of the house. I grabbed the kitchen knife and headed over to the sound and prayed I wouldn't have to use the knife. The creature kept pounding on the house, and I could see the frame bending in more with each hit. If he kept this up long enough, that wall would cave in. Where's dad's shotgun? I asked mom in a panic. She was frozen. My dad was an avid hunter before he died, but my mom had never held a gun in her life. I grabbed her by the shoulders as the pounding of the walls continued. Mom, this is life or death. Where is dad's shotgun? I don't know. I don't know, she cried. Maybe under the bed. It was my last hope. I ran into her bedroom and began pulling everything out from under her bed. Finally, I felt the cold of the shotgun barrel. I didn't even check to see if it was loaded. I ran straight back out into the living room where the creature was in full swing. Suddenly, silence filled the air. You could hear a pin drop in that house. I heard the wind howling outside and the trees rustling, but no more bashing. I slowly crept out the back door, shotgun at the ready, and crept over to the side of the house. I tried to be as quiet as possible, taking light steps and holding my breath. I could feel my heart pounding as I turned the corner. It was dark outside, and I could barely see anything. I went over to where the creature was attacking the house, and it was ripped to shreds. Debris littered the yard, and chunks of wood were ripped off the house. Had this thing continued, it would have definitely broken through the wall in a matter of minutes. Next thing I know, I heard a roar from behind me. I whipped around and saw the beast sprinting towards me. I closed my eyes and fired off a shot. I heard the dirt as the creature stopped himself with force. Now silence. I fired another shot and it made the strangest sound. He took off into the forest so fast I could barely see. I listened to his giant footsteps until they finally disappeared. I went back inside. My mom was still quivering in fear. Is it dead, she asked. You have to be careful leaving food out here around the bears, mom. Then I went into the guest bedroom. I closed the door. I remember falling to the floor and contemplated how close we came to death. Was it a Bigfoot? If you're asking me, what else could it possibly be? Thanks for sharing my story.